Welcome to Questions from the Crowd. Today, I'm joined by uh, George Parthamos, uh, CEO and founder of Bed Odyssey, um, who are doing a, a crowdsource funding raise on On Market. Welcome, George. Hi, yeah, Tim. How are you? Very well. Um, this section or this, this interview is based on questions that we get from the crowd, from On Market investors. Um, so I've got a few questions here that they've asked. Um, I'll start with a simple one. Um, Talk us through Bed Odyssey, uh, the product at this stage, and we'll get into sort of the company specifics a little bit later, but tell us a little bit about Bed Odyssey and where it came from and what it does. Sure, sure. Uh, look, uh, Bed Odyssey has been around for three years now. We actually founded the company in 2018. And the problem we're really trying to solve or to help punters with is to help them uh, save time and improve their winning strike rate. And the way we do that is we allow for punters to set their predefined selection criteria. So if you think about it as a punter, uh, you know, they're very sort of um, religious in the way they approach their mm. selection process, right? Mm. So different punters have different ways they look at things. Some people are interested in track and distance. Some are looking at past, past performance. Some are looking at barriers and, and all that kind of thing, right? So everyone has their own different and unique way to, to do their selection. And so we automate that. And we allow for punters to set their very specific uh, selection criteria based on what they want. And then the system will then take that, that, that profile that they define and it will automatically go through and sift through the millions of data points that come through for every race uh, across every state um, and, and every racehorse. And it will identify perfectly matched selections based on what the punter wants. So they save literally hours of time going through the form guide and they don't miss any opportunities because a lot of the times being a manual process, you know, people make errors, there's time constraints, races jump every two minutes. Um, and we're not a bookmaker. We don't create any, any markets. We don't take any bets. What we do is we, we are effectively a tool for punters to use um, when they're looking to, to, uh, to, to have a punt um, and to save them time. And in your offer document, you talk about um, that 1.3 million Australians a month uh, place a bet on either sports or racing, which, which is a which is a massive number. I believe it's uh, per capita the, the highest globally. Uh, every one of those, I would imagine, is is your target market. Yeah, look, I mean, the market in Australia is huge. I mean, we we you know uh, as I, as I say uh, many many times. Uh, racing and sports is in our DNA as Australians. We, 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 love, we love sports, uh, we love racing, and we love a punt. And so 1.3 million of us every month uh, place a bet on either sports or racing, um, and every single one of those punters will use some form of either online wagering or, or, or TAB uh, outlet. And so every single one of those, those punters is a potential customer for Bet Odyssey because we provide a companion tool that helps them um, you know, find, um, uh, you know, shortlist their, um, their selections and save time and improve their strike rate. Just talk me through um, the technology behind it. Um, yeah, sure. So as I said earlier, uh, we've been uh, developing the platform since 2018. So we've spent three years uh, in R&D, building the infrastructure, building the platform, building the multi-threaded algorithms. We call them multi-threaded algorithms because if you think about the vast amounts of data that are coming through the system, um, our platform ingests all of this data and then it has to sit there and, and match um, a selection criteria from every single, every single punter um, and, then, and then produce those on a one-to-one -one basis. So what you receive as a recommendation is going to be completely different to mine. So it uses cloud-based computing, it uses artificial intelligence, it uses machine learning, and it pulls all of that together. So all the latest technology that you would expect from, from a cutting-edge uh, technology business is what we use. Um, and also, it's a big data play, effectively, mm -hmm. because you've got, you've got vast amounts of data coming through the system. And that's just for uh, thoroughbred racing. Once you start bolting on greyhound and harness and uh, football and soccer and cricket and other sports, all of a sudden, the complexity of the system starts to grow. The advantage that we have is that we've spent three years designing the system so it actually has been built from the ground up to cope, to cope with multiple sports, multiple data ingestion feeds, and multiple profiles. 
And so we can quickly spin up additional sports categories because the base infrastructure, the base yeah. algorithms have already been built. Yeah. And I would imagine given um, sort of the legislation uh, for online gambling, online sports gambling in the US that, you know, Australia is a great test case. And then obviously it's a, I think, I think the, the numbers in your offer document state that it's a $25 billion market at the moment growing to 50 billion over the next five years. Um, that's got to be the prize for you, I would imagine. Well, well, it is. And, and the beauty about the US is it's, it's effectively an untapped market because it's, it's now starting to come out of the traditional on, on track betting into this online wagering market. Yeah. So that's only recently happened because of changes in, in uh, federal and Supreme Court law changes, which have basically legalized online wagering across the US. And, and right now, 22 states have legalized uh, online, online wagering. Um, and the rest are going through the process. In fact, there's only one state that's actually rejected online wagering in terms of not allowing it for it to proceed. Every other state is looking to get to pass it. And so this is something new for the Americans. We're used to it here in Australia because we've had uh, the luxury of uh, having online wagering by mobile or by web uh, for, for a long, long time. But in the US, it's been illegal up until now. Now it's starting to open up. So all of a sudden, that opportunity to to get into that market and to also change the behaviour, which is important, to change the behaviour of the of the punters um, in the US who are not familiar with these sorts of technologies because they haven't been able to use them before. And so yeah. we see that as a huge opportunity, especially when you consider, obviously, as you said, the market size going from 24.9 billion US dollars um, to 59.5 billion US dollars in the next five years. So the trajectory, the great trajectory is really, really high. And the take up of the technology we believe is going to be high as well. Let's just move to, to another question. Um, a question that's come in from the crowd is in relation to your business model. Yep. Um, your, your, your offer document talks about multiple revenue streams. Can you take us through how you are going to monetize um, both the subscribers and then also from an advertising standpoint? Sure. So, so effectively, Bed Odyssey has been designed to have three uh, core um, or, or key revenue streams. Um, the first one is in-app mobile advertising. So every time a user actually downloads and uses our application, uh, we have advertising space in those applications that we generate revenue from. The second one is a, a um, monthly subscription service. Um, so our model is that anyone can use uh, Bed Odyssey free of charge and they will receive a certain amount of features for using the service free of charge, uh, but they're limited features. Uh, for example, they may not be able to have more than two profiles running actively. They may not be able to access all of the customized uh, recommendation profiles that we produce. Um, and those that want, that want to upgrade will then have access to all of the, all of the, uh, the process. And then we charge a nominal fee of $14.99 per month uh, mm -hmm. per, per, um, per uh, subscriber, which is actually a lot lower than a lot of the competitors. Typically with these tipping services, you're finding typically north of $20, $30, $50, even $200 a month for some of these services. So it represents tremendous value, but it, on, the benefit on our side is that it's all automated. So yeah. we don't have the high overheads of staff um, or, or, or any other sort of capital intensive requirements. Mm. It's all software driven. Um, and so we, we have those benefits. Uh, the third area is our, online, is our daily newsletter. So we send out a newsletter uh, to around 50,000 uh, daily uh, email recipients. And that newsletter produces uh, 10, the top 10 recommendations of the day, which is also in our application. Um, and um, yeah, that 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 uh, has advertising space within that as well. Now, in your um, offer, you're doing a hybrid offer, so an investor will get equity in the company, become a shareholder by virtue of their investment. Yes. But you're also doing for certain investments at, at, a, at a certain investment uh, amount um, is giving them obviously a, a free trial of the product. Can you yes. talk through that a little bit more for us? Yes. So what we want to do is it's important for us to, to not only to, to uh, close out our investment round, but to also grow our audience, particularly our subscriber audience. And we think that the best way for us to do that is to obviously work with our investors who come on board to provide them value so they can actually try the service uh, for three months or up to 12 months, depending on how much they invest. Um, and then if they like the service, they can recommend it to their friends. They can, they can obviously continue to be, be a, become a pay, paying subscriber. Alternatively, if they don't like it as investors, they come back to us and they say, mm -hmm. hey, these are the things we're not quite sure about. 
these are things you know we think need improvement mm. and, and that's an important part for us because we did a soft launch of this product late last year and one of the things we found is that we didn't quite find the product market fit but what happened was we spent the next three or four months fixing the problems that our users had identified, relaunched the service in June, found a really strong product market fit, and now we're seeing really strong growth and retention rate for the application. So we see having our investors to help us to make sure that this product meets the needs of the, of the general punter. Yeah, no, that's, that's a good insight into, into your, your testing and, and where you've come from. Um, why should a non-market investor um, invest in Bed Odyssey? So Bed Odyssey, the product is built. The product has been tested. The product has got daily active users. We're in a sector that's a high growth sector. With the constraints that everyone is going through right now with COVID, um, the sector has actually grown during this period where other sectors perhaps have, have, have uh, declined. Um, we're also in, a, in an area with, where our business model is a a high margin, low cost business model. We don't have a lot of CapEx requirements. We don't have, a, and we can scale up really quickly. And it's also got global appeal. So whilst we're focusing on thoroughbred racing today, we can very quickly spin up additional sports categories mm. that can take us to other parts of the world that we saw, discussed earlier. Mm. So, so overall, it's, it's, the product is, is, is live. It's being used. We've got paying subscribers that have just started coming on board as well. They've converted from the free trial. And we've got our first national advertiser being the reject shop that's come on to buy space across our network with others to follow. So we know that our product right now has found the right product market fit. It's got a great audience. If you look at our audience demographic, um, our audience uh, is effectively the high value audience that, that advertisers are looking for. Um, you know, it's an 82,000 average income, $1,300 disposable income that they spent on, on uh, racing and sports betting. Um, so really strong demographic that advertisers are looking for. So all of these things have all come together um, with the US expansion opportunity because of the, 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 uh, the deregulation over there uh, and the legalisation of online wagering. They've all come together to, to almost be a perfect alignment for mm. us coming to market. Mm. The, the, the final question, which every crowdfunding investor always wants to know, um, an exit, a trade yeah. sale, an IPO listing, what, what, yeah. what's coming up in the next sort of three to five years, do you think, for, for Bed Odyssey? Yeah. Look, we, we, are, we are fairly aggressive in our, in our thinking around this. And, and we believe that, that uh, once we get meaningful revenue coming through, which is what we're working on now, which is what the funds are predominantly going to be used for, for our sales and marketing activities. Yeah. Once we get to meaningful revenue, we believe that we can take this company public within, within the next 12 months. So that's how confident okay. we are of actually uh, having an exit. Now, um, you know, there, there might be opportunities for trade sales down the road, but that's not something we're looking at right now. We're squarely focused on closing out the round, growing, increasing our sales and marketing activities, growing our revenue base to be a meaningful level to list on the ASX. And then within 12 months, we actually go public. Now, as, as, as the experience that we have as the management team, we have experience in taking companies public. Uh, my last startup I actually took public back in 2014. So this is the next startup I've, I've actually started and founded um, in 2018. Um, and the other director, uh, Nick Cape, specialises as a corporate advisor to take companies public. So we have the experience and we have the know-how and we also have the network of investors uh, once we get to that scale to be able to go public. Okay, George. Well, thank you, George, for, for joining us from questions from the crowd and uh, we look forward to a successful race with you. No problem. Thank you, Tim.